call this meeting the Orangetown Council to order at 703. Roll call. George Knoll. Erica Parton. Sean Harley. Angela Rosinas. Derek Jones. Lisa Mullaney. But the record show, Randy Sneed is... Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes from Seventeen twenty twenty two. All those favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I want to change things up just a little bit here. Is Miss Walls here for yes. MCDC? I uh, think we will hear from you before we go into the citizens input. So. Uh -oh. I wasn't trying to hide from you in the corner. <laughs> I didn't think you were about it. I was just so happy that I didn't pull a Randy this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 People this down for yeah. We won't let him Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, um, I think going around, I was uh, at the commissioner's meeting. Um, I was at the commissioner's meeting yesterday. And just kind of giving a third quarter update on what's going on um, at the NCEDC. Uh, what I didn't share there, and uh, I haven't shared the other towns that I've been to already, is that the industrial property that we have on LoopNet here in Argus is uh, generating a lot of leads for us. I counted up that we've had 150 contacts since July 1. Um, on the um, the ITM Go property, um, and I didn't have enough time to count it going back to January one. Um, now I will say that it slowed down a little bit. We are seeing a little bit of a decrease in leads. Probably a lot to do with the pre-meeting conversation, inflation, supply chain. Um, companies really just aren't comfortable spending money right now and so many things are uncertain, but, um, but we still are uh, seeing significant um, interest in it. And I looked at our weekly report, we have it on LoopNet, which has been a, a fantastic source of leads for us. And um, it came up in um, 112 searches and uh, there were uh, 50, about 50, like 52, virtual tours um, of the facility. So it's getting looked at quite a bit more than what we're, um, um, for people that, aren't, that haven't reached out to us. So we're, um, we're excited about that. Um, one of the things I, I know I, I, I shared before was our hope for a ready project for the NCDC was to do a revolving loan fund so that we could get more um, manufacturing centers or shell buildings put up. Um, because of the restrictions with the federal ARPA, ARPA funds, our project wasn't eligible for ready this round. Now there is talk that there'll be a ready 2.0 coming before uh, the legislature uh, at the beginning of the year, and that would use state funds to fund, so that'll give the state a little bit more flexibility with the funds, so uh, we will continue to pursue that, but in the meantime, we're, go we're starting to look at where are we gonna put manufacturing centers number four and five. And Mark and I have very, very vague, very uh, basic conversations about it, but uh, it is something that we're considering. Also, um, urban 
In a perfect world, we would do it in a town that hasn't already had a manufacturing center, but the town also has to be able to, to support the project. So just putting out there that we, we are looking to, um, to get the four and five up and going and um, in, in 23 break ground. Um, Let's see, um, slide four, we have a couple of construction projects that are underway that we've been working with. Um, Pitco is building a new facility in Plymouth for, um, to be leased to Plymouth Molding Group. Um, they were, they're expanding uh, and they're adding jobs to that project, to adding some new equipment that has uh, already gone through an abatement and renewal by Anderson, which will be close to 100 jobs and good paying jobs. Uh, that one's under construction, that's the, the photo on the right. Um, so we're, we're excited that those projects are going forward. Um, labor data, most recent June, um, you can see that the Marshall County unemployment rate below the national average, below the state average, and uh, there were only 22 counties in Indiana that had a higher unemployment rate than us. Um, but one of the things that really sticks out in our region is there are 25,000 jobs today unfilled in manufacturing and in the healthcare sectors. So the, the is that so, a re, excuse me, is that a region? It's a region, yeah. Okay, not in our county. Yes, yeah, so in our region, region two. Um, but that is a lot of jobs, and which leads to um, one of the, the two two of the projects that um, that we threw the NCDC threw all of our support behind um, at the county level, countywide projects was a new nursing sim lab at Ancilla College and a career innovation center for um, uh, technical training, job training, um, for high school students and, and, and through adult education. So we can uh, get folks, train, you know, start getting kids introduced to manufacturing jobs and manufacturing. And you know, we keep saying manufacturing jobs are not like our fathers in manufacturing jobs. You know, they're, they're cleaner, they're more high tech. Um, so let's, let's get them in there and start getting those skills developed. And they're also um, looking to expand their healthcare services. And we'll have the space to do that at the Career Innovation Center. Um, and this would be open to all five school districts. Um, the Lifelong Learning Network was the formal applicant um, to the project. They have their first full-time director now. Um, but it'll be, so it'll impact Argus Kids, Triton. Um, Jeremy Griffel, the superintendent of Triton, is the chair. Of, of that board, so there's definitely a county-wide um, emphasis on that project. And uh, Ancilla with the Nursing Sim Lab, uh, Ancilla's biggest scholarship now that with, they're affiliated with Marion is if you get your associate's degree in nursing at Ancilla, you can then transfer to Marion and get a bachelor's degree, and the tuition is the same as if you were still at Ancilla. So it's a huge discount, um, and the the numbers um, when you when you listen to their Chancellor Height, the numbers at Ancilla, it, like seventy five percent of their students are from within an hour. They are a lot of first generation college students, um, a lot of rural kids that live at home and drive to Ancilla. And the numbers say that if you go to school, if you go to college in your backyard you tend to get a job in your backyard when you graduate from college. So this is a way we can keep our kids um, staying here and, and not, not fleeing the nest after college. So, um, so we're really excited about that. We think that there's a lot of support with Ready. We're really hopeful that, um, that we'll get funding on that. There were 157 projects submitted um, last month for Ready. For just the first round, these were just capital brick and mortar projects. $157 million, uh, the county, or the, the region only received 50 million. And uh, so they're, they're gonna have to, a lot of tough decisions to make. Um, and they still, and they have a funding, another funding round coming through this month for, uh, for programming. So um, it's gonna be very competitive. So every ready dollar we get in our, our community um, uh, will be appreciate, uh, appreci appreciated. Um, we're also working on trying to find some more greenfield sites in the county. Um, you, know, you guys, you guys have some. You guys, you, your 20 acre site is our best greenfield site in the county. Um, 
We're working with the Indiana Economic Development Corporation and our utility partners to um, to find some other potential greenfield sites. You know, if there's a if there's a, I, mean, I don't think that we'll be able to do a mega site, but we do have some. We do have some rail served, uh, some rail served parcels that that could be a good potential. And of course, as soon as gas prices go up, the interest in rail served properties uh, goes up as well. So, um, so we're we're just in the beginning stages of working with a consultant that the state has engaged in. But um, but be prepared to hear from me um, probably within the next month. Um, the, the process is once this consultant out of Atlanta does a 30-foot like, view of the county and where they identify where they think that there could be some good in, um, greenfield sites, and then they meet with, they'll meet with utilities, town officials, and CDC staff, and we'll you know, get Jamie in the room, and we'll all look, and Mark, and we'll, we'll look and see, okay, so here are all the properties that they found. Well, that one doesn't work because it doesn't have good road access, or that one doesn't work because we could, you know, the property owner would never sell, or you know, whatever. So then we can start eliminating and then identify a short list that we can go and pursue. Um, so we're we're looking forward to getting that started. Um, John, I'm surprised John's not here, but John Vanderweel, your appointment to the board. Uh, he's doing a fantastic job. Um, he's uh, a great resource for us, and you know, I don't know. I don't know that you can find someone that has more enthusiasm for Argus. Um, and he brings that to our board meetings, uh, which is great. And um, so we appreciate you um, you putting him on the board. We, we really are enjoying working with him. And, um, and Mark is fantastic to work with, too. And Jamie, and they'll get questions from me like, hey, I've got a lead. It needs this much power. Can you make it happen? And I don't know that Mark can say no. <laughs> so. <laughs> Which, uh, which yes, we know. Yeah. So I just, I you know, just to go through the motions, I'll uh, I'll throw the question out there, knowing the answer in advance. But you know, it's, uh, so I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. I have, I have one thing that's kind of it's it's an itch in my brain and it's driving me nuts. And is there anything that from the economic side of you know the county chair of that division, is there any way you can help pile on the state to help modernize this intersection out here with us? Well, I'm tired of our residents getting killed. I'm tired of it, and they just keep dragging their feet and dragging their feet, and it's just ridiculous. And I don't know. I'm drawing a straw saying somebody with any kind of clout that can help put the pressure on them to get that started. So, uh, so I I have just uh, become active with the 31 coalition, and they had a meeting August 8th, August 18th, um, and that was my first meeting and, that I attended, and um, I'm trying to find out. I, my impression is that this <coughs> is the the can's getting kicked down the road and it's going to be an issue for the next administration. With that said, the uh, first candidate to announce his run for governor is Eric Doten, who's from the Fort Wayne area. He used to be the Secretary of Commerce um, under um, the Pence administration. He was in Marshall County last week. His campaign manager, his campaign lead, is Eric Wong. And uh, Eric is the son of David Long, who is the con used to be at the State House. Now he's a consultant and a lobbyist for the US 30 and US 31 coalition. I gave him the entire spiel, and so it's it, Eric already already had gotten it from his dad. Never hurts to reinforce it. Um, so I, I know one of the, the I know the first governor candidate. It's on his radar. It's something that he really cares about. I just think we're going to have to, unfortunately, get through the next couple of years and before anything can be done. And that upsets me as well. Because I, I think I've shared with you guys, I, I get gas, or I used to get gas quite a bit at 10. It's just a really good stop for me. And it's, um, but I'm, I had a close call. Someone, 
I was getting on Old Michigan Road while I was coming here. I was coming from Plymouth, and I was in the median, and some car got next to me in the median and went in front of a semi. Now, I knew that there was no one behind the semi. I didn't know that. People go so fast. Like, I'm not going to risk it. I was going to wait five more seconds. And a car came. I didn't understand it. So there's, there's so many problems all around. People go too fast on 31. People are too aggressive with the turning on. Yeah, it's an issue. Well, what, and danger is our thing. What, just to reiterate, what really makes me mad is, I don't know, a couple or three years ago, Governor Holcomb came out and said, which interested, and he wanted them to move to a priority, and we still are waiting for any kind of progress at all. That was the governor stating to move ahead with it. Mm -hmm. And we are still waiting. So I just want that to be on the record that yeah. Governor Holcomb has failed terribly in that aspect. Uh, I appreciate that. I think when they moved the intersect, I mean, they had already engaged the Troyer group. You know, Mark and I, we had a meeting like pretty early on when I started where you showed me all the different intersection <laughs> designs that the Troyer group had started, survey work was done, and then they kicked it down and they made it a part of the Pell study, which th there's a huge difference in the progress on 30 and 31. I don't understand why you would combine them. They um, it makes no sense. No, I, I agree. And I agree with you. It's kicking the can down yeah. the road. So they did. They just so they got greased the most. Yeah, exactly the right. They just opened their RFP again. We, you have one. I have one. Engineer contact us. So first thing we did, we started over. Just so you know, Troyer no longer does any engineering like that, so they will not be the engineering firm. So they'll select that again. Your program year is 2028. That's what it got pushed back to. Even if they started today, I know you want that moved up, but even if everything was started today, it's still going to take roughly that long to get it all done. Because they haven't done environmental studies. They have not. I mean, you had a preliminary engineer about all you had. Well, that's my point, Mark, is I, three years ago when Governor totally Holcomb would come it. out and publicly stated that, so, you know, and told the DOT to get on it, and, and, that, then we and they started, and they pulled back. We Somewhere down the state, the Indians aren't following the chief. Indot blamed the governor, the governor's office yeah. blamed Indot, and it became a... But I will tell you, Sean, the good thing that is coming out of this is that these engineering firms that are, are going to submit these proposals are actually coming here and asking us what we want not just taking like Troyer did and designed their own study and did their own thing these engineering firms are actually coming down here meeting with Mark I got one at four o'clock the other day but he's coming back to meet with Mark and you know John G was very instrumental in getting that what we actually wanted on paper and so he knows what it is we've all sat through it you know we we had the presentation and so we're presenting that to these people and telling them what kind of growth we expect to see in argus in the next few years and they're taking that into consideration the only thing they're not taking into consideration is getting rid of all these roundabouts they want to put everywhere so yeah. you know you know that, that that's it's good to hear on, yeah. on, on that side of it, positive note, but a project that should have been started by today, this time, now we have to wait till 2028, possibly, right. well, in our original before anything starts. And in the meantime, we keep having community so members getting you could put hit, say it killed, however you make it, on that road. It's just terrible. And it's not just the road. There are, I, I agree with you, there are people that aren't patient enough. And it slows down our economic growth for Argus. Tremendous. Because we can't, we cannot say what we, you know, um, the people that own the land along the highway can't sell it because they don't know what's going to happen with their intersection. So I understand your frustration. We've all been through it. But at least these engineering firms are coming to us and not designing what they think is best. And, and it's being pushed behind the scenes. Um, Kevin Overmeyer is the chair of the US 31 coalition, and he keeps it at the forefront of the coalition. And um, and I know he has conversations with Indah, and he's the one that, I was involved with the 30 coalition, and he's the one who's like, you know, like why aren't you at the 31? We need you at the table. And I'm, okay, I didn't 
you know, I, we just gave them a check every year. That was, I didn't know that they were really active still. It was my impression that they weren't, but they're recommitting to, uh, to everything and, and he's the chair. So, I, um, yeah, so it's, it's being pushed behind the scenes, but yeah, but it's still frustrating. There are so many things tied into that project. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from safety, you know, on the economic development side and, and the planning and the future of, you know, the town's direction of doing things and it just has been very frustrating, at least for me, I just got about fed up with it. So. Yeah. Come on through a three and cut them out of the car, you think it's frustrating? Yeah, I understand, George. I, I don't know that I want that job. But you also have to plan it through. I understand. Because, I mean, they just like our first meeting that we've been through, they're going to put an interchange at 110, they're going to put an interchange at 10. They first said they're going to shut down every road in between. Oh. So, I mean, you got to kind of try to... I mean, you gotta look at EMS response times, you gotta look at fire response times, yeah. trying to, all the states are gonna look at this, that's all they care about. Well, you also have to put into consideration the ag community, because I also saw on my way here tonight uh, a big tractor with a, you know, big, with bait, uh, with hay trying to cross 31. Yeah, yeah this, and the original proposal that we, as a town, sent out to the county, and the county adopted it. That we had the ag community, we had everybody planned in that. It was it's a good plan, but it just wasn't theirs. Yeah, it wasn't their plan. That's what we outsmarted them. That's what the deal was. So, thank you. I just wanted to vent my frustration. Yep, I appreciate bit. it. Anybody else? Um, <laughs> we have a question. Here. I have a question. Is this more of a? Is this more of a? Well, is this just a political thing, or is there something else could be done here? For instance, I'm, I'm just saying, individuals, <clears throat> I'm a new member of the community, so individuals can't get a whole lot done, but maybe as a town, talking through the attorney, the town manager, pressing buttons, mm -hmm. as a town, so as we feel this way, could let that be known. And if we let that be known loud enough, obviously this wiki wheel gets the oil. So, so I, we did that. We have we been did. more than vocal. Yeah. So I, I have been told that unofficially, maybe being the squeaky wheel has caused some of these issues. <laughs> that the town lobbied very hard and apparently didn't follow a chain of command, an unwritten rule about how to do it, and that you guys were just advocating for your community and um, there's that got push. very mad at us. Yeah, because they, yeah. Tore apart yeah, their they, they got very mad at us, and the commissioner of INDOT got very mad at us, and then he kicked our can down the road. Well, it's, and we so, call a spade a spade, they get yes. spade. So we fought <laughs> against the J-turns that they wanted to put into effect, and we did a petition, a big petition, and we sent it to just about every political, because I personally sent them out. So we sent it to just about every political person that we could think of. We got the news channels down here, and we did interviews on the intersection. We did the squeaky wheel, and that's why we ended up in the position that we're in. Um, many public open houses. Many public open houses. Did. We spoke out against INDOT at our every every public hearing that they had over the J turns, and they got very mad. And then they they showed us exactly what they could do. All the more reason to vote all them crooks out. So but what you're I saying is that's not, not, not being transparent. Huh? And that's not being transparent. Oh, they're being transparent. Well, they, they, they're what I'm saying is they're not, they're, <laughs> they're pulling all the cards. They're like, not letting you know. So if they had plans for you guys, they should have told you. Right. Well, in that was the answer like, to the governor. And obviously, they think they're above the governor. That's my thoughts on it. Well, <clears> but you have to have somebody that pushes back, so. And we have, and we've tried. You know, we're at the position that we are, and now we're doing it. We're trying to do it the right way so mm -hmm. that we don't get it kicked further down the road. Yeah. So, understood. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, but but it's not fun. No, it's not fun. <coughs> no, and watching people die is yeah. not fun. So. Thank, thank you, you so Lord. much for coming. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate thank it. No, my pleasure. Thanks for getting Sean started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, started. That's not my first time. It won't be my last. <laughs>
Yeah. I just asked her. Anyway, they I know it's a turn of meeting over. Randy. <laughs> <laughs> do we have to do that? No. No. <laughs> Thank you. Citizens right. input now. Yeah, yeah that should have been. Citizens input. <laughs> uh, I called in, and I know you guys probably made your call, but they didn't pick up my stuff. They just left it. Uh, the, the large item from back when we did the really? large item. Yeah, they, they didn't mess with it. Okay. And, and the other thing is, too, it was, for those of us on that street, it was Monday before they picked us up that week. Mm -hmm. And trash pickup on Wednesday, so I, like, what's the point? I understand. <laughs> it's two days later. Uh, they so. were in in my defense. I let them know that night uh, with Paul. Yeah. I or the next morning, I I was not aware that the whole half of the or quadrant of the town had been missed. So I did uh, call them personally that morning, and they told me that the the soon as they could get a truck out to us would be Saturday. They came Saturday and they picked up maybe three streets and they yeah, left the rest. Yeah. And so we are now, I called back on Monday because I was getting more complaints Monday morning and they brought, they sent another truck back out that day, yeah. but apparently <laughs> um, they did not pick up everybody's yeah. stuff and I do apologize for that but I will tell you we have a great garbage driver his name is Carrie he's he works for Republic and he knows the town he was on vacation that week he deserves a vacation he was on vacation so they sent a new they well they they sent a new driver in and he didn't realize that it was large item pickup and he got he didn't have enough DOT hours, is what I was told. So that's why he left a quadrant of the town. But he left a lot more than just your quadrant. There were other sections and areas. He was not familiar with the town. Well, I'm, I'm not here to. Yeah. Uh, I get it. Well, I'm not, I and I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you exactly what happened. So you know, and I will say something to them but they're going to tell me the next large item clean exactly. cleanup is in october and i apologize but i can't make them do yeah. i mean i took the time to break everything down because I'm sorry. first time last last spring i i just put the basketball uh goal post out there and, and they didn't pick it up because it's too and yeah. i understand it's probably yeah. too big so i cut that down little well, scrappers come through and grab it as soon as i cut it down oh, that's good. Yeah. but they left me they left the plastic yeah. base Oh, and, I yeah. have, and I have a 32 ounce um, plastic trash can which is mangled. Right. So it's not like so they're big, but they're they're definitely right. manageable. So that put them out there. And, and if yeah, you so. call my office tomorrow morning, um, if you would please, yeah. um, let me know exactly your address. I can look it up, but I, I'll probably just sleep and forget. So if you could call tomorrow morning. Um, what I can do is if you have that trash can out there and just that one item, I can ask our super duper good guy that is going to be picking up the trash tomorrow if he can pick it up. I can't guarantee he can yeah, no. because he's he's only going to be driving the truck with the arm. They when they come in with large item, they have the bucket, bucket yeah. you know. So, but I can ask, yeah. you know, and he might just do it. He's really good about that. Yeah. So. So. If he doesn't get it this week, then I'll just assume it'll be October and I'll drag all that stuff back to my shed. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you know, and again, it was just like the perfect storm uh, for that week. Um, but any other citizens input? I'm just back here again asking about the replacement of my sidewalk, but from what I hear. That <laughs> might be a long time from now if there's no cement anywhere. Is that what you said? There's a shortage of Portland, yes, of course. to make the concrete, yes. But And I know you've been doing streets, or somebody has, so maybe there's, you know, it'd probably be next summer, but is there a list to be put on? The, the streets are actually happen? a contractor that's doing them. They're, that's separate from sidewalks. Most, most oh. of the sidewalks the town does, unless they're in Okay, two different people then. Yeah. yeah. South Michigan. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know if you wrote down my address or... I, what, what I went you, down and looked at it. I mean, it's in bad shape, Okay. And what's your name? I'm 
Gloria Ely of okay. Just so I get it right for the minutes. I didn't Thank know you. if you had a list started for next year or no, there's there's any there's cement or anything? Yeah. What? There's, so there's a there's a sidewalk list. I mean they've oh everything's I, I everything in the town like the streets and that get graded. Graded like as A B C D. Do you go around checking sidewalks or the something? The state does this town. There's streets for us, didn't they? The streets. Yeah. But we have walked around so, and the guys have walked around and we notice what's bad and what's not bad and so it's they try to get in Jamie. One of the problems is that's Michigan Road, but that's a state road, so right. there's no community crossings. It's not something the town's going to pave. Mm -hmm. So if I'm we do, about if we do, well, if we do that sidewalk, sidewalk, that'll have to be, well, when we do sidewalks through the community crossings, we do the roads and the sidewalks that are adjacent to them. So that's yeah, something we have to do separate. The, the road across from us got done. But Logan Street. Yeah. Huh? Logan, Logan Street. Street. Yeah, that, yeah. that was a community crossing project. But those are those are town roads. Michigan Road is a state road. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. For the record, at the last time you were here in Sealy, Jamie did go down the next day because he sent all his pictures of those oh. folks. So I've still got them in here somewhere. So it's probably going to be a summer or two. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it does take time. We got more sidewalks to be done than we have man hours to do with everything else we're doing. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll have so now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I also want to point this out, not trying to, it is not our responsibility to do sidewalks. That is actually the homeowner's responsibility. We just try to do as many as we can. Oh, I knew that was Yeah, it just is hard. I mean, we get to the ones where we can, and like you said, we the state's doing a grant program, so when we do these streets, we're able to do some extra things like sidewalks. That's okay. how we've done as many as we can. But normally, if they're bad enough, we try to get around. Because uh, I remember in your instance, uh, you must have had a tree that was there that was taken down at some point. Yeah. Um, well, that when they took that out, that's what pushed the sidewalk up. Reese said that he so, cracked it. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's just the whole thing up. So, yeah. Uh, money mess. Question. Time. <laughs> so if if that's the case, you now I've got sidewalk there for my house. Can I have like Uncle Bob come over and pour that, break it out, pour it for me? And mm -hmm. By ordinance, yeah. yeah. By ordinance, you can because by ordinance, the homeowners are responsible for the sidewalk for maintenance and. I don't have an Uncle Bob. But I'm just asking. Yeah. Yeah, the town's just been very generous over the years to do it. But it's always been the homeowner's problem. And the worst one's always come first. Yeah. And the problem is, is the worst ones pop up faster than what you can fix them. There's one on Broadway that's like that. Well, the trees coming yeah, next week don't like help anything. Yeah. No. And there's there's new trees that people are planting all the time. And too close to power line, too close to sidewalks, all that. And yeah. it, it's just a never end cycle. Yep. Else? Public hearing for 2023 budget. This will be the first reading. Yep. So we need to have a public hearing first. Moved to open the public hearing. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to open the public hearing for the 2023 budget. Any further comment? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is now open. So I gave you a sheet. I apologize, I didn't make a lot of them, but um, I, I gave this to you with along with the booklet that Baker Tilly. I did not have Baker Tilly come in this year because we don't listen to him anyway. So <laughs> when we budget. <laughs> So I wanted to let you know that um, with the form ones that we did get together and have our budget workshops, this is the budget that we came up with um, for all the departments. Um, the budget for this year, or for next year, um, I guess it doesn't have it on, on here, but um, at the end of, at the beginning of, in January, we're estimated to have one, Point seven million in there. If we spend out our whole budget next year, 
then we will have 1.658 and that would be a deficit of $86,000 roughly over, that would be all of our cash, re um, we would dig into our cash reserves by 86000 so we would overspend what we would get in for cash ne next year by $86,000 roughly. So I will tell you, and George can probably back me up, or anybody that's been on the council for a few years. Fifteen. Uh, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Sixteen years. Um, Sixteen years. <laughs> um, this is probably the lowest number I've seen. Um, as far as the eighty-six thousand, normally it's in over a hundred thousand if we were to spend everything. So the way that the town of Argus budgets is, we kind of go for the gusto. And we try to to put in every dollar that we bring in to be used, and sometimes we go a little over um, because we do have some cash reserves. But we have never been totally over budget except for one year. I think last year. Last year. Right? Last we year. were because of the stellar grants yeah, and stellar. everything else. We did go over budget. So. And with that being said, the town is still. Debt-free. Yes, and the yeah. town is still debt-free. Yeah, we don't so. have any open bonds. Yeah. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there during the public hearing so that everybody in the audience could hear. And it is just a rough estimate. Baker Tilly does a much better job at going over the numbers, but um, I think that the sheet of paper kind of speaks for itself. So if you have... Any questions? Now's the time to ask it. Or if the audience has any questions, yes. What accounts for most of the overage? Um, we do a lot of community crossing, like Jamie said. So um, some of that is we're spending out our MBH funds, you know, to do new roads. But if you've driven around Argus, we've got pretty good roads, and we've been really hammering on them. Jamie has applied for almost a million dollars every time. Yeah, it's not totally that. So so the way that we budget, I'm just going to use these figures, our general fund, we budget 500000 We are, are notorious for only spending 450. We We always budget that 500 and just to be safe, but we never spend that. So a lot of your not overages never, in here, yeah. sorry, one time and I mean, <laughs> and that wasn't really one time. We actually knew that was going to happen in that year. That's right. <clears throat> But yet we saved. Uh, but if, the one thing she didn't tell if you remember when we started this, we were three hundred and nineteen thousand dollars difference, and we've got it down to just from some changing in that, and she got some different revenue coming. So yeah, and you know we do try to um, we try to stay in our budgets every year, but we do have cash reserves for special projects like community crossings, and we also have. Um, you know, like we budget every year to spend so much money out of our rainy day fund, but we never spend it because of the fact that it's why spend it if you don't need it? And so that's that's in here. So point. that kind of says that we're going to spend it and it depletes what is on there, but we are notorious for not spending it. So I, I would say that is your biggest. And of course the fire territory is new new to our budget for the second year. So this is the second year that they are, they get to approve their own budget, the Fire Territory Board approves it, and then we bring it in and um, it gets approved overall with our budget, but they they are separate. They get they're, to do their Yeah, they are a separate tax entity, just as yeah. the park is. Yep. Yeah. Okay, here's a couple of numbers for you just to kind of answer. Right. We're talking about $86,000. So twelve, we had twelve thousand and sixty-six dollars um, shown as a negative for next year on the park, and thirty-eight thousand nine hundred five in the rainy day fund. And just keep in mind what she just said about the rainy day. Right. You got over half of the eighty-six thousand dollars right there yeah. in those two funds, and the, way, the reason the park is that way is because we've done a lot of updates, and we're going into our first year bringing in a lot of updates out there and bringing up this town. So we allotted a little extra because we don't know what we're going to get into there. Mm -hmm. We don't expect to spend all of it. 
but we did give it a little extra there. So there's over half of it, and like everybody else has said, I've been on this council for almost five years now, and other than last year, we have never spent our, our budget. entire budget. Yeah, never. We've always been able to come out on our positive side, so and that's the way we like to keep it. Trust me, and they all know that I insist. <laughs> So at, overall, it doesn't look bad. Does anybody else have any questions, or do you have another question? Mm -hmm. Move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Any further comments? Not all in favor, say aye. 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 <clears throat> No, uh, you want to do a I'll tell you to do a uh, training report. Okay, attorney report. <laughs> what I do? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, no. Gonna wait. Hang on, you got to vote to close the hearing. So we did. 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 I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry. We both missed it down oh, here. So that's that's right. We missed a lot of things. <laughs> I'm so excited to tell you about the attorney stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. All right, I'll try to do my best, um, but I do have a fair amount of topics here. First, I need to still get with Chuck DeWitt on 304 East Plum and 220 North Uric. It's on me, um, but I know that was, those were properties we talked about at the last meeting. I still need to get with him. I want to let you know that the deeds that we had resolutions for at the last meeting for the Deer, Deerfield Meadows and the Downtown Square, those have all been approved, recorded, um, and so at the end of the day, Deerfield, all those lots are owned by redevelopment. Downtown Square is now totally owned by the park departments, okay? The other thing I wanted to bring up was we have a rezoning issue out of Deerfield Meadows. Um, that is something that was put in front of the plan commission and they had a meeting last evening and I understand that they did pass a resolution to recommend a rezoning and nothing for you to do tonight just bringing you uh, up to speed here at the next meeting we will have an ordinance to approve a rezoning all of those lots are currently zoned heavy industrial and they need to be zoned R2 to basically have houses put on. Um, the work at the plan commission has been done. We will have a public hearing at the next meeting. And then after that, then we'll have an ordinance. And again, if you got any questions, fine, but it's pretty, we kind of got to do it. Um, just letting you know that's common, okay? The other issue is, it was actually supposed to be at the last meeting that we had at the end of August. We were going to talk about chickens, animals, and how our ordinances look one way or the other. We're going to have a, a public workshop. I think that got preempted by a executive session. So I'm just keeping out on everybody's radar. That's something that we want to have a workshop on at the next meeting or the meeting after that, or where does that, where does that go? I don't want it to fall through the cracks. I know I sent an email back on July the 7th. I know we've had some folks from the uh, town come in and talk about that. Um, but we do have some things that we might want to take a look at. We have a public workshop that is scheduled for the 21st at 6.30. It's up to you whether you want to... I mean, I have pushed him out twice, and sorry. Yeah, I, and that's okay. I just, I just don't want to fall through the cracks. I, I, I agree. It's time to make a grand decision. We've uh, kind of overruled it because other things came up. And, uh, it's not... It's because of necessity, not because we're trying to be unfair to Darren. I understand. No, it's, um, it's believe me, I'm, <laughs> I just think it's one of those things is like, all right, we do need to kind of look at what we have and I the next agree. weeks. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Everybody else is. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, when are we doing it? What time? September 21st. First at 6.30. 6.30. I'm going to take half an hour. 
Oh, a six. Six o'clock. I'm sorry, six. The okay. workshop is for six. I apologize. And again, there was an email that I sent on July 7th that had a lot of the town code, the zoning ordinance, so it would be good to kind of review that, take a look at that, and know a little bit about it when we come in so we're not starting from scratch. From scratch. Um, I also wanted to talk to you about a railroad closing on West Street. And Jamie and I have been working on this with Norfolk Southern. I don't remember anything back. Well, and that's okay. I don't, I don't know exactly what you folks know, but there is basically a push to close that uh, intersection, that grade crossing is what they call it. Um, we got some kind of a resolution from them and it was kind of messed up. So I put together an agreement um, for them to sign so that both parties would be obligated to do what the agreement said to do. Um, I sent that to Jamie and he sent it to them. It's been two, three weeks ago, I think. Two it's two weeks. Um, and he, he's saying, Jamie's saying he's not heard back from them. It's basically a situation that we need them to look at the agreement so long as they're in agreement with the way it's drafted now. They need to sign that and get it back to us. Then that triggers us to say, yes, we have a resolution that adopts the agreement, closes the grade crossing, and then moves things forward. It does amount to a payment to the town. Um, and it also talks about some improvements on other crossings at Linden and Kenworth. Ken, Kenworth. So it's something I think maybe you're aware of. I know Jamie is, or I've talked to him quite a few times about it, but it's kind of in, in the ball's in their court, in other words, to get it back to us. But I just wanted to keep you up to speed that we're, we're on it. We're just kind of waiting to hear from them. There's also an issue of we need to have a public hearing. I don't know that we do, but they deal with this a lot more than I do. Um, I don't see any requirement that we have to have a public hearing to close that grade crossing, but we'll listen to what they have to say. Okay. The last thing I have is the Beers property. <clears throat> At the last meeting, um, and actually I'm going to go back, I think it was on the meeting we had on August 3rd, uh, back up. In May, we sent a letter to the Beers saying that issues uh, were present concerning the roof and other structural issues for the house and it fell under the unsafe building ordinance. They've addressed that and they've taken care of that. As the summer progressed, other things came to light, but it was really, it's nothing to do with their building. It was more about vegetation, uh, trees, shrubs, grass, etc., which is a totally different ball game. But we worked with, they had an attorney that they were kind of talking to and helping uh, represent them. I talked to him and explained thanks for the work on the roof, but there's also issues with the grass, etc. And then at the meeting, and my notes show it was actually on August the 3rd, that we tabled it um, to have the town take a look at that. And I don't know where that's at, but again, I'm just one of these things, I don't want to let it fall through the cracks, but we're opening a different can of worms <clears throat> talking about vegetation trees brush etc at our last meeting Derek I uh, I did inform the council uh, I'm sure you were here that I did visit that property with Corey we looked at it we took pictures and at that time it had looked like they had done some stuff with some vegetation <clears throat> and I think we had kind of uh, left it at that meeting my understanding was is that Chuck and Corey, or they were going to go ahead and, talk, you know, and point out a few other things to them, see if they want to do that before we invoke any more money or you know to do right. something that we may not have to do. So that was what the gist of it was from the okay. meeting prior to this one, and I'm sure that's probably on the tape. But maybe I have poor notes. So it sounds to me like we're just going to leave this alone unless or until somebody brings us back to the board. You should have pictures that I sent you on or about before the last meeting. I got August 16 pictures. Yeah, yeah that's, that's all right. That's before and you're right. Meeting. You're right, yeah. Sean. That yeah. would have been. And so, yeah. Okay. So, I'll shut up. I'll close that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I just, I, I knew that we had briefly discussed it at the last meeting. I updated everybody. Okay. So, we'll leave that alone. And that was, yeah, all I had to report. Anything else you do with that? Second. 
We have a motion and a second to accept the attorney report. Any further comment? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Appointment of Adam Freakoff to the Planning Commission. This will be my appointment as the president of the town council. I'm allowed one. No, you're allowed more than one, but this is one tonight. You get Lindsay. One tonight. Yeah, one tonight. <laughs> so Lindsay Shively was your last appointment, and okay. she ended up um, resigning from the planning commission. And so I went over it with Derek. I was supposed to do this uh, a meeting ago, okay. and um, so he has come to the last couple. Not, I mean, and. Um, so if you could, I did swear him in um, so September 1st. September 1st, yes. I did swear him in on September 1st, but then Derek told me to make it official in the meeting. So please make it official. And retroactive to Re September. Retroactive yeah. to, December, to uh, September 1st. Yep. That's it. That's it? I have, I have a question. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> and, and it's just because I don't know. And it's more for Derek than anybody. I believe Adam is an employee of the town, correct? He is, yes. There's no conflict in there of him holding position within it's, on the town. No, it's on it's the not okay. Paid. I, I, that's what I didn't know. It's not paid. So, okay. It's not paid. Two lucrative offices is what you gotta avoid. So an employee is typically an okay position to have. I'm not going to go down this real far, right. but um, you know, just your your average employee that's out uh, working on alignment or something like that, he could be on redevelopment or something like that because it's not an elected or appointed office. Yeah. And for the record, I have no problem with Adam serving in that capacity. I just didn't want to get us into a conflicting issue if right. there was one that maybe nope. we, so And that's what we I, kind of need to pay attention to. I think that he would be fine holding that position. So. That's why I always go to Derek first. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I've known him for a long time. So, anyhow. So, we took care of the attorney report. We yeah. took care of the appointment. Old business. Is there anything need to be brought back up? Moving on. New business. Now we need to have the first reading on the ordinance 2022 20, 11, the budget for 2023. Make a motion to pass ordinance. 2022-11, the budget for 2023 on the first reading only. We have a motion and a second to pass ordinance 2022-11, budget for 2023 on first reading only. Any further comment? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Yeah. Please just make sure that you're, we Thanks. have a quorum for the next meeting so we can get it. Mark, did you get anything done on what we talked about last night? No. You didn't get no pick. You didn't. Well, I got them, but no. Oh, we'll get them for the next. I'm going to go back and get them to start. Was the water gone this morning? Yeah. They no, were all I think, the right. I think it's the timer working. So they should have that. I leave. I'll make sure it's set. So it's automatically gone. Was the moisture out of the. Yeah. Not. There was still some. Yeah. Yeah. Which I didn't want to go a couple days and see it. We're going to discuss it. There's still was the building down there. Mark and John and I went down there last night. We turned the floodlights on, and they just really were good. They were impressive. And uh, we've got the street lights, which will have to be turned to. They, you were right. Yeah, they'll get they'll get fixed. But uh, other than that, yeah, it's uh, coming along. Mark's gonna have a slideshow for us. He took some yeah. pictures inside now. We and just started. I just started working with Kerry. We'll do a ribbon cutting here at some point. Yeah. Probably try to get that done sooner rather than later because of weather. Yeah. I mean, in the next month and a half or so. So it's not quite all done, but it's getting closer. It's, and things are getting. Uh, are we using it Friday? No. No. We're not ready for that yet. Not ready for that yet. We'll be in. We'll be out in the streets one more time. <coughs> But next year, look out. <laughs> We're going to bring elephants and everything in. All right. So let's march on and get out of here. Claims. We have claims to report to declare. She's not listening. 
Our claims are from August 16th till 9-6, and the total amount is $1,178,331.48. Any questions? <laughs> and you'll notice that in there we we had some larger flowers. Yeah, I, I looked through there and saw that. Like, I, how could we have so much? But if there was. Well, we we had some of the final paint. Yeah. Well, we're d down to a few final payments on the downtown square, mm -hmm. and then I think two of them were in this one. Yeah. And then um, we had. The roof on the EMS building. Yeah. By the way, just to let you know, I took that out of the CCI fund, the really? cigarette sex fund. Um, some of it I took out of the general fund that supports the maintenance of the, but because there wasn't enough um, budgeted funds out of there, I took the rest of it out of CCI, which is normally what we do for capital projects. So that's pretty well, that's all taken care of. That's all taken care of. The roof for the EMS building is totally paid for. Now all they have to do is to merge from the other building company. And, and yeah. they're working on that. Yeah, I say that's not really. But that's in the bid. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. 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 We had one little issue over there. Um, Corey's office had some water in the ceiling. I talked to B&B, they're going to take care of it. So when, when they had the roof tore off, there were some shingles on there, they thought that'd be good enough, and they papered it. Well, when we had that storm, it blew it off, so, but, they'll it's take, temporary. yeah, they'll take care of it, so, <laughs> I told Corey it'll probably take some time, but it's not leaking or anything, it's just, it looks bad, so. Yeah. So, you didn't have to take any funds out of utilities ring to help offset that EMS yeah. building. You took all that out of the... Yeah. So there was, um, if you want the breakdown... There, no, no, I, 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 I know what it was. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> there, there, was, um, there was some money in the EMS budgeted line item that we always have, and I figured since it's September, hopefully we don't have a whole lot that happens at the EMS building in the next few months, so I did deplete that, but I left a little bit in there just to cover minor expenses. Okay. And then I took the rest out of the cigarette tax fund. That's great. So. Keeps. That's I great. I was afraid we going to take it all out of Jamie's. <laughs> so we have a vote? Yeah. yeah, no, I, yeah. I make a motion to accept the claims from August 16th to September 6th. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept claims from August 16th to September 6th. Any further comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 German Angie. Aye, motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Any further comments? All in favor say aye. 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 aye.